Hello everyone, welcome and thank you for joining me today. We were busy chatting about what's happening tomorrow actually, our cover stitch class, and so we are maybe a couple of seconds late and I'm sorry about that. But uh, we're excited about tomorrow. We have a uh, cover stitch live Zoom class. You are welcome to sign up for it up until the time that it starts. Well, maybe give us you know, 10 minutes or something. But uh, at any rate, it is tomorrow at noon central time. And I have lots to talk about with cover stitching. Um, you know, I've been using it now for several years. Did a class for Craftsy that included and cover stitching and put, putting those details into fashion sewing. So um, anyway, I'm going to talk about the setup and why. First of all, I'm going to talk about why you want that kind of feature, either on a serger or a separate dedicated machine. And I'm going to talk about how you set it up and how you stitch it and how you do two thread and three thread and do it in the round and all kinds of things. So looking forward to um, that. Are we We're having sound? mic issues. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Check so everything looks like it's on. They're both on. You're mic'd. I'm mic'd. I'm just going to double check our All right. connection. I'm going to check one. Here. Okay. Let's see if it's any better. Can you guys tell us All if right, it's any better? All right, so how about now? Can you hear me better now? Well, we have new mics, so maybe we should get our old ones out. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we know those work. You we said have that I'm fine, and they told us to, Samantha said to switch. So let me okay. get your mic. All right. Okay, okay, let's try this. All right, everybody let us know how we're sounding. So hopefully, all oh, right. somebody said better. Okay. It is better. Well, Interesting. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, I don't know if I need to repeat where I started or not. Yeah, Maybe I will it. just briefly. Yeah. Um, I'm talking about our cover stitch class, which is tomorrow, Wednesday, at uh, noon, central time. And I'm gonna be talking a lot about why you're gonna want to uh, invest in a cover stitch feature or a separate machine, how you're gonna use it, and show some different techniques about cover stitching. So um, I think the class might last, I don't know, I haven't really gone through it yet in terms of time, but maybe an hour or, or less. But um, it, it's $10, you can still sign up, you can sign up tonight, tomorrow morning, whatever, but hope to see you tomorrow. So I'm working on that today after Facebook Live, and um, I think that's going to take me a little while to put that together for you. But I have taught that concept and, uh, at, for Craftsy, and it's a class called uh, Surging, Cover Stitching, Fashion Details. I think it's a great class uh, that still exists on Craftsy. You can still sign up for that class. And a lot of what I'm going to talk about, uh, I will have addressed in that class. So if you have that Craftsy class, you may or may, may not want to join me tomorrow. But Tomorrow is live, so uh, that's always a little scary. It's kind of like Facebook Live, you know, if I mess up, I really mess up in front of everybody. It's not, not recorded. Uh, it will be recorded, but it's not uh, filmed in terms of being able to repeat things and do it better the second time. All right, so uh, I always like to talk about So Confident because it's such a big, big deal for us. And this is the last day of January, so the project for uh, January, it's kind of the last day. Of course, you can watch it anytime. You can watch it for the rest of your life. But uh, it's the last day that we're probably going to be talking about it in a serious way. But I did want to talk to you about uh, the pattern that we use for both January and February, the first two months. And it's the Now Shirt. And we take that Now Shirt pattern and transform that pattern into two very different looks one in January and one in February. So the first, I'm gonna show you the now shirt. So if you were to uh, make the pattern, it's a fairly short boxy shirt with a fold over collar that's open at one end. And the sleeve is fairly simple, fairly straight, long sleeve, and it has uh, one, two, three, four, five buttons. Nothing particularly uh, detailed on the back as well. So the first month, which was January, we transformed it into a jacket using lightweight corduroy. 
And you can see now it has seven buttons. We've added these lovely pockets, bun pockets on the front. We've added a bottom band. We've added a sleeve cuff and a vent and a sleeve patch. We've added a stand-up collar. We've just changed the collar piece uh, that comes with the pattern. So it really, really looks different. That is January. But to take the same pattern and transform it is really the concept for the entire year, using an existing pattern and seeing what we can do to change it up and make it really unique. So to introduce what's going to be coming to your way tomorrow, this is the second pass on the Now Shirt pattern. And this time we're using Silk Shantung, something totally different than the corduroy. And I'm going to be talking to you in the video, which will be out tomorrow, about how you can take silk shantung. We think of it as a very dressy fabric, but when you wash it, it becomes, excuse me, <coughs> uh, less of a sheen and drapier and much more casual if that's the way you want this jacket to be. But we are featuring pin tucks using metallic thread, three tucks on each side of the front, and then a, an array of pin tucks on the back in a sort of flared pattern. We're using the same collar pattern. Again, it's open on the end, just like the original now shirt. But this time, we're adding some what we call faux binding. And the faux binding is around the neck, down the front, both center fronts, and at the bottom of the sleeve. We're using silk dupioni for the faux binding, a plaid and a couple of solids, so the kit uh, includes either uh, mahogany silk shantung or black silk shantung. It includes three um, fat quarters of silk dupioni, the plaid and the two solids. It includes the metallic thread and regular thread and so forth. So I think this is a really lovely jacket to wear dressy or casually. I would wear this to a dinner or a function of some sort, a wedding or a, um, a dinner out, and put it with some beautiful black pants or something simple like that. But I would also put it with a t-shirt and wear it over jeans and wear it casually as well. So uh, this is coming tomorrow. The video will be released, and we're set to go. So we're, we put a lot. Oh, and the buttons come in the kit, too. I forgot to tell you that. And one other thing I want to tell you, so, so confident members, uh, pretty much every project this year is some sort of shirt or top. Uh, two or three of them are knit, but some, many of them are woven. And so you're going to want to have some of our Japanese ultra sheer interfacing on hand. So just use your discount that you get as a So Confident member and pick up a couple of yards of our Japanese ultra sheer interfacing. That's what I'm going to be using on every project. Uh, it comes in white, cream, or black. So just Get, get that ready to go because that's what I'm going to be talking about all year. All right. But today we are talking about jeans. I think I've worn jeans the last three years more than any other garment that I have owned in my entire life. It's just been that kind of life the last two or three years. And a couple of years ago we put out this pattern called the Getaway Jeans. And the jeans have some really interesting features to them, unlike just jeans. These, these have some elements to them that I think have a designer edge to them and are fun to make as well. So it does have a traditional fly front to it and a, a somewhat of a contour front band that is flat. The traditional scooped pocket, lots of top stitching, but it now has a dart on the inner thigh, strictly decorative. Let me come forward a little bit. Maybe I can do that. So this dart is not a fitting dart. It is just a fun decorative dart. I saw this in a, a pair of jeans that was made in Germany, and I just thought it was kind of fun. The legs are tapered, and it's meant to be rolled up a couple of times. That's the hot thing to do with jeans. And so we've done a little bit of binding on this seam allowance that rolls up. So that binding is not extending through the whole side seam, just for six or seven inches at the bottom. But this flat band then turns into elastic across the back. 
And this is one piece of wide elastic that actually gets stitched down the center. So it's not two rows of elastic. It's not one casing, or excuse me, two casings. It's one casing with top stitching through the elastic. And then it has a yoke. And that's a nice uh, feature. You can add some back pockets if you want to. This doesn't, seem, doesn't have it, but you can. Uh, these jeans, I'm, I'm really happy with the way they fit a lot of people. I've gotten a lot of comments. We have a lot of photos from people. And they say many times you can take it out of the envelope and just make them, and they fit pretty well. But even those who know how to make some adjustments for fuller hips and thighs and smaller waists and bigger waists and all that, uh, those are pretty easy things to do. And you have this yoke piece that is something you can work with. I add a little bit of length to my yoke because I want these jeans to come up a little bit higher in the back. I'm pretty okay with jeans that are set a little bit lower in the front. Not much. I'm not much of a low-rise girl. But I, I'm okay with them in the front. But I do like my jeans to come up completely to my waist in the back. And I do that by just changing the shape of this yoke just a little bit. So we're going to talk about some of these in a little more detail. All right, so when you're talking about sewing fabrics that are a little bit heavier and doing some top stitching, which I think is a nice feature, uh, the thread that we use for the top stitching is this dual duty XP heavy thread. Now this comes in 19 colors and I'm sure at some of the big box stores they probably have all 19 colors. I tend to limit mine to maybe white, a deep red, the tr traditional gold yellow of jeans that we see, and black. But you can buy this in many colors if that's what you choose. It is a heavier thread. It's more like a buttonhole weight or button weight thread. But for top stitching, it's fantastic. But it does require, I think, a different needle. And it's when I get my top stitching needles out. You know, top stitching needles are available in either 90 or 100 or 110 uh, uh, dimensions, millimeters. And I use the 90. I really don't find a need to ever really use the 110. They're so big. <laughs> They're just too big. But you can do a lot of top stitching through a lot of layers using the 90 top stitch. It has a bigger hole. It has a groove on both sides. It really is built for these heavier threads. So I suggest that you invest in some top stitch threads. I do lengthen my t I stitch length on my top stitching. It's, I don't normally do that. When I'm top stitching a regular garment and doing some edge stitching or uh, top stitching, I usually use the, the, uh, the same size stitch length that I use to construct the garment, which is a 2.4, 2.5 millimeter length. But when I'm doing top stitching like this, which is definitely a feature, then I'm lengthening that stitch, but not clear up to a five or even a four, maybe a 3.5 or a three millimeter length. Just, you have to experiment. I wish I had this, I just don't. I have a notebook that I keep samples in, and I make a lot of samples of just this kind of detail. You know, you have to decide, you have to get the right combination of thread, needle, stitch length in the layers that you're going to be top stitching. So sometimes you're going over something that is six or seven or eight layers of fabric and you want to make sure that as you're coming along you're going to uh, keep that even stitch length. And when you're coming over higher points that's hard. The machine doesn't want to feed through the machine as well so the, the stitches are going to get a little bit shorter. So for at least the brand of sewing machine that I use, there's a leveler. You know, a, a presser foot wants to stay level. And when it's tipped one way or the other, that's when you're going to get in trouble with uh, fabric not feeding through and stitches changing in, in length or even skips stitches. So put that leveler behind on the back side of that presser foot so that your, your Presser foot is running completely level through those tricky parts of the top stitching. If you don't have that kind of leveler that comes with the machine, you can do the same thing with uh, some folded up paper or cardstock or a little piece of cardboard or something like that. 
But just know, sometimes I get that question from people of why am I getting these skip stitches and uh, misbehaving top stitching? Well, it's because that presser foot is not level. So just remember that. Um, okay, I got off track stitch lengths. Oh, my samples. Um, so I have all these samples. Well, I, I'm writing another article for threads and some of the samples that I wanted to send are at threads. So I'm, I'm sorry, I can't show you all my samples. But I remember when I was experimenting on the top stitching for jeans and another garment that I was making as well, I made about 10 samples to get the right combination. When I'm saying that a needle should be maybe a 90, you might find that 100 or 110 is better for your machine. You might like a different brand or type of thread. You might like a different stitch length. So it's all up to you, but you work that out before you commit to this garment and get it all sewn up and then do the top stitching. Get your samples, make a recording of what you've done, put it in that notebook, and you'll have it for the next time as well. Um, you can use any kind of zipper in this fly front. You can use a regular zipper, except you really don't want an invisible zipper. You want a zipper that has the teeth that are exposed. But there are zippers that are made specifically for jeans. And they do have uh, brass teeth and the brass poles. And they are called jeans uh, zippers. So buy a seven inch. These come in a few colors as well. Um, and so one of the things that I love about uh, this technique, this technique is straight from Sandra Betsina's Power Sewing book. You can see that I like this book. I have lots of little post-it notes on this. Um, I'm always referring to Sandra's book. She has Power Sewing and more Power Sewing. And she's revised them since this older edition. Um, but you know, either, either edition, I think it's fairly much the same information. It's just prettier probably than, than maybe this one. But I've owned this for a long time. In fact, I don't even know how old it is. But it is pretty darn old. Um, but I think they're fantastic. 1985, that's how long I've had this book. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's kind of scary. But at any rate, her technique, we have borrowed her technique. Thank you very much, Sandra. Uh, for the installing the fly front. I think it's the best technique I've ever seen. I've never seen it anyplace else. And we use that technique in our getaway jeans and our Madrid pants, which are also a jeans-like pattern. Similar, has a few more seams, but it's a slim-legged pant as well with a contour waist and flat front. The difference really is that the, our jeans have the yoke in the back, and have uh, the elastic in the back as well, which the Madrid pants don't have. So um, one, of the, one of the reasons why I like this technique is you do some of the top stitching on the fly front. It's the very first thing that you do before you even begin to install the zipper. Can you see the stitches? It's kind of hard, probably. It's not. Not really. Um, well, there's top stitching there we right here. And you can see this is still open. There's no zipper installed yet. But that's one of the very first things that you do. And this zipper is installed in such a way that the top stitching that ends up on the front, this curved top stitching, which is pretty traditional jeans detail, that really the zipper is installed in such a way that it's connected and in there, and this top stitching has very little, if not anything, to do with the holding of the zipper, and I like that. So it's very recessed inside of here, so you don't see any of the teeth. I like that. And notice that the zipper extends above the pants. Now, I like that because I don't want to sew around this ever which is why I extend zippers above the top of my pants. This is true with all zippers in all conditions, really. Now, you can shorten a zipper in two ways. You could, if you wanted to, install this so that this part is here. And you could do a bar tack along the bottom and cut off the bottom of the zipper. That's pretty standard stuff, too. But I would rather, once the waistband is on here, then this zipper is not going to, you know, that's its stop. 
is the waistband. So there's no reason to, in my opinion, to cut a zipper off at the bottom. This also has a, maybe I didn't get here with this, but this also has a nice cover on the inside. Oh, it's on the floor. All right, here it is. <laughs> Um, what's this called? I can't remember on the pattern piece. A fly. Uh, is that a cover or is it a um, fly placket, fly extension? Fly extension. I'm not sure. Anyway, this gets installed, and and it protects the zipper. These brass zippers can be a little bit harsh on your skin, so it's a nice cover for that. So that gets installed at the very end and gets surged on right there. Shield. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Shelby. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so you don't cut this off until you get the waistband on. I've made that mistake. So of course you want to unzip it, which you would do to install the, that wants to be on the floor, doesn't it? That, <laughs> that little shield. Uh, but once you get the waistband on, then you cut this off. And then you have your stop, which is the waistband. Okay. <laughs> or a zipper guard. Zipper guard. I think that's I what think we that's actually call it in our mm -hmm. patterns, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing I like about the zipper area is that the pocket is actually a different shape so that it extends into... This is the first pair and was a, kind of a prototype for our pattern. It's now actually attached in here, now that I think about it. But this is the pocket piece on the inside, and we like to use some contrasting fabric. And in fact, I like to use a fabric that's stable, not a fabric that has spandex in it. Because this, this provides a, a, a little bit of support and smoothness to a tummy area. Now, not everybody has a tummy, but a few of us do. And so this feels good. And I think it's a nice, nice feature. So I remember that. The other thing that, oh, back to the um, fly front. I forgot about this. So we have a little uh, pattern piece in the pattern that looks like this. And this is a template that you make. And you take some... tracing paper and a tracing wheel and you trace around the uh, cut lines, if you will, of the pattern piece onto a piece of tag board, which can be a manila file folder, and you get a template and you cut that out with a rotary cutter and that's what you can use to chalk mark around here. So that's the perfect size. No guesswork of where to stitch. This is the same size for every size of jeans. This template is always the same size. So remember that. There are tools that you can buy. As a matter of fact, we carry the plastic fly guides that pretty much do the same thing. But this is an easy and inexpensive way to create uh, a line uh, that you stitch. At the bottom of the fly, we do a bar tack across there so that that's reinforced as well uh, when you're zipping and unzipping the jeans. Um, the other element that I like to add you see the rivets on jeans that you buy in the store, good old Levi's. So these are little rivets. We have them in brass, shiny brass, bronze, or antique brass, and silver. And we sell these on our website in pairs so that you can put them right here. And it's just a detail. You don't have to do it. We have about half and half going on around here. But I like this. And I just, I don't know, I just think it looks cool. And it makes it look less like you've made them 
then not that I care about that, frankly. I sort of like it when somebody says, did you make those? Um, I always think that's a compliment. Anyway, we sell those, and um, they're not that easy to find. These happen to come from England. I'm sure they're around in the United States someplace, but ours come from England. The other thing that you can buy in the big box stores are these uh, no-sew buttons. And they're really easy to install. You just create a little hole, and it has a back and a front, and it snaps together. And that's, that makes them also look like something ready-made. They come in various designs and colors as well. So those are some, let's see, do I have anything else? I think that's about it for the technique-wise. Any questions at this point? Uh, we do. So should the top stitching thread be used in the bobbin as well? You know, that's something you have to experiment with. I have done it and not done it. And I generally do not. But sometimes it requires it when I can't get the stitch to look good. So I think you have to just experiment with that. It certainly is capable of being in your bobbin and using it. I always, I mean, the theory is generally that you use the same thread in the top and the bobbin always. But top stitching is a little bit different about that, potentially. Can Linda show us the finished jeans with the zipper that goes into the waistband? Sure. Okay, so here are your pocket pieces. We do bind that edge, you don't have to. You can serge it if you want to, but this is a fold out here. And there's the zipper going into the waistband. Is that, is that what you wanna see, I think? I think so, yeah. Um, I think what you, maybe you wanna see is that there's no stop here. Maybe that's what you wanna see. You know, there's normally a, top, a stop to the top of a zipper, and that's eliminated because it's been cut off. Okay. 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 Are all those layers at the zipper, presumably in denim, kind of bulky? Would you make a shield out of something like chambray for less bulk? You could. I haven't found that to be a big deal, uh, honestly. You know, you're only talking about three layers at this point which is not too bad. I think that depends on the thickness of your denim. And if, that's, uh, is it, if it's feeling too thick, then absolutely that's a, a good solution. Do you remove one or two teeth before sewing on the waistband to prevent breaking a needle? No, I don't bother. I just hand walk the uh, uh, stitching over that. I maybe kind of lift my presser foot a little bit. I just maneuver it. I'm too lazy to get those pliers out and remove those teeth. Those brass teeth are kind of hard to remove, frankly. Where do the jeans sit at the waist? Well, for me, they're about a half an inch, uh, three quarters of an inch below my belly button in the front, but they're at my waist in the back. So is the Sandra Betsina zipper method in the jeans pattern? Yes, it is. If you own the getaway jeans pattern or the Madrid pattern, that technique is in there. If you're not interested in making jeans, or these patterns, but you want that technique, I suggest buying the pattern just for that technique. I mean, it's a fantastic technique, really. Changed my life. Will the gathering from the elastic in the back stay gathered when worn? Well, I think that depends on how you fit the pants. Uh, not necessarily. Uh, there are not any gathers on mine. It pretty much stretches out. But this is a, a knit elastic, so it's kind of lightweight, and it's not super stiff. So I don't feel this uh, tightness in the back. These feel good. They just feel perfectly, rightly snug around the waist. And do you need a tool for the rivets? To put the rivets on? Uh, no, except that you do need to make a little hole, which I use an awl. Uh, so you need something to make the little hole first, but the rivets just snap together. It doesn't come with a tool, I know that. 
Now, if you're, this, this comes with a tool. When you buy these, you, you buy them generally in sets, uh, various types and sizes and colors and whatever. Uh, it's like a repair kit, they call it. Why, I don't know. I think they think you're going to, they, they don't think that sewers are ever going to make jeans, I guess, and they're just repairing jeans that they already own. So they call them repair kits, but it does come with a tool. Um, does Linda sew denim with a walking foot or a regular foot? Um, I'm sure that I always have my uh, even feed feature engaged in my sewing machine. So that is sewing with a walking foot. I sew with a walking foot, so to speak, all the time. Would you mind showing us the back of your jeans to I think maybe to see what that oh. elastic looks like? Okay. So she also made a funny comment that she's like, is that too weird to ask her that? <laughs> Kinda, I don't want to show my waist. <laughs> so you can see how it's not really gathered that much in the back. Yeah, it doesn't elastic. feel gathered. Yeah. I don't, know. I don't know how they fit me in the back. No, it looks good. Okay, good, good. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't ask me what my measurements are. <laughs> okay. Perfect, she said. <laughs> okay, the rest of the next question is about the fabric and okay. the fabric content. All right. So um, I thought we would talk about alternative fabrics. We've been talking about heavier fabrics here and denim including. But uh, we have a lot of fabrics that I think would make up in the jeans patterns or the Madrid pants patterns, but are not denim. But they have some stretch to them. These are the kinds of jeans that I think are just a little more comfortable when you have a bit of spandex. So all of these fabrics on the wall are something, which I will tell you, and then a little bit of spandex. It doesn't take much. It just adds that little element of comfort. It's funny how we've gotten so used to having fabrics that have stretch in them over the years. Um, but I want to talk to you about one look before we get into this uh, a little bit. So this is a, li a line of clothing that I follow out of Germany. I really like their styles. And I like their little books because they have interesting color combinations. In fact, this one on the front really intrigued me. This light uh, celery green with light khaki. I thought that was really interesting. But so they're showing a lot of using the same fabric for pants and top. And these are very much like a jeans-looking pant with a simple shirt in the same color. And even on the next page, they're showing uh, three pieces, kind of a jean-like pant, a vest, and a shirt. And I thought, oh my gosh, that shirt is the now shirt. And the vest, I, I'm going to show you something. So I, I brought some garments that we can talk about in a minute uh, that I thought would be good. Uh, to wear in all one of these whatever you like. Um, I am wearing the Picasso sweatshirt and it's actually a class that we have did a couple of years ago and I love this sweatshirt. It's totally deconstructed. It has outside darts and patches that are top stitched and raw edges and this sort of backward uh, neck binding. So I'm very warm today. I do have on a little uh, t-shirt underneath it, but this is a, a really nice uh, uh, garment to wear on a cold day with jeans. And so it's fleece and I love it. So anyway, um, so let's go through some fabric. So this side is, uh, four of these are a twill and they are 97% polyester and 3% spandex. They're a stretch suede twill. So there's definitely a little bit of a diagonal. It almost feels like that feather whale corduroy, but it's not. It's a twill weave and you can see the diagonal twill of it, but it's been suede and they're, they're, they're just beautiful, I think. It would make really gorgeous pants and top. So if you wanted to do all one color, like Oscar does, these would be fantastic. So we have the black, the raspberry, what do we call this? Um, we call it plum. This is called coffee, and this is called mustard. So these four are all the same. They have some drape to them, so you're going to get a little different look than a stiff denim. But boy, I think these would just be just 
beautiful. So the one on the bottom is interesting because it, it's really a printed denim. So it's white on one side. You could do white jeans if it's time for white jeans. But I love this um, aqua turquoise color. And this is cotton for you southern girls that are um, wearing these kinds of colors this time of year. This is perfect for you. And I'm going to wear that in April. <laughs> All right. Uh, these are a little different character. First of all, uh, let me show you this. We, uh, we have the feather whale corduroy uh, that has stretch in it. And I think corduroy is it's the hottest fabric going this season. So, you know, in solid black corduroy, that would be beautiful. It has a similar look to this. It is a little bit blacker, which... I don't know, you know, we wear black as black mixed with other black, but blacks are different, that's for sure. So uh, this one is a, um, has a stretch in it. This is nylon, rayon, viscose, and spandex, a stretch woven. It's got some body to it, but it still has some drape. And it has stretch both ways. But one of the things I'm finding with a lot of these fabrics is the stretch is vertical. So you have to think about that when you're cutting out because you want the most stretch to go around you. So likely you're going to cut a lot of these fabrics on the cross grain. This is the same thing, I believe. Yes, very same fabric in a steel gray. So you can see there's a fair amount of drape, but yet it's got the guts, gutsiness of, of a jean-like fabric. This one is cotton and spandex in a great navy blue. Um, we also have a, another navy blue that's a little bit darker, which I didn't uh, put on the wall, but I think we have two blues, actually. Now this one, I wish I could have hung it correctly. This has a tiny, tiny bit of a smooth, I hesitate to work, use the word sheen, but there's definitely a different flavor to the right side of it. And this is the one that has the most drape. It's also the one that's not marked. Huh, I guess I don't know what this one is, but I was thinking about that fabric when I was looking at these garments, thinking, oh my gosh, this top and bottom would really be a nice selection because this would make a great top as well. The stretch is definitely horizontal on this one. And it's kind of a satin weave. I'll call it satin weave. This is Well, it just says stretch woven. I think it's cotton, but you know, I'm not sure. The tag is not marked. But this baby blue, that would be beautiful. And I love these together. This is a really interesting combination to me. That light blue with this light khaki color. So let's, I'll show you what I'm talking about with, I don't have matching tops, but these are the kinds of tops that I think would be pretty with jeans in the way of shirts and potentially the same fabric. So this is the Zona shirt. You can make it with or without the pleat in the back. Has buttons inside the front placket and a simple collar. And this would make a great sh uh, shirt. Either open, maybe wear a white t-shirt with this shirt and pants, something like that. You could do the whistles shirt, and you can leave these whistles, these flanges off of it. And when you do that, it just becomes a nice, simple, simple shirt. It's one of my favorite shirts. And this is the pattern that's coming up next for So Confident for March and April. So you might want to have this pattern on hand anyway. We're going to be working with this pattern. Now here's what I was talking about with this vest. So this is this. This is the Mixit shirt worn as a jacket. 
if you leave the sleeves off of this and leave this little banded collar off of it, this is what you get. You get a great vest. And you could have several buttons or uh, one important button or whatever. But it's a great way to create a vest to go under the same shirt. So have the jacket and make the same pattern as a vest, just leaving off the sleeves. So. All right. We have a few more questions. Okay. For now I can't remember what they were. <laughs> So the feather whale corduroy doesn't list spandex, spandex on the website. Can you clarify? It does have spandex. Well, it has stretch. It has to have spandex in it, um, I think. Um, maybe I should. Yeah, it, ha it has stretch to it. So that is something we need to add. We need to look at that and see how much <coughs> spandex, maybe like 3% or something like that. We'll look at that and um, make that correction if we need to. We do, do we still have those other corduroys? I wonder if those don't have stretch. Well, uh, the weight. raspberry and the uh, I just wonder if tartan and the blue have stretch, and it's the same thing. I wonder if the, the heavier weight ones that we have Maybe. If don't have stretch. Maybe. So that could be. That could be. Yeah. Let's see, can you repeat the name of the Sandra Betsina book? Sure. It's called Power Sewing. And the, her second book is called More Power Sewing. It's just individual, lots and lots and lots of individual techniques about a lot of different things. The things that you don't read about in regular sewing books. Um, when will the kits for the February Sew Confident project be available? Tomorrow. February 1st. And what is the sleeve finish on the Mix-It vest? The sleeve finish, uh, I haven't looked at this. I'm sure it's a facing, but let's look. Um, yeah, so when you leave the sleeve off, then you just create a facing. That's a pretty fancy facing. That's really nice. I like the shape of it. Yeah. Usually it's not that rounded. I like it. Vests are back. We're seeing a lot of vests. The oversized vests. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a Facebook Live in, I don't know, three or four weeks on vests. So you'll probably see this again. <laughs> what is the issue of the Oscar book that you showed? Do they have what numbers? is the issue of it? Yeah, oh, issue, meaning it, I just got it. So it's uh, spring, summer. Just got it. You can go to their website and see the same thing. They have those look books. Uh, Ishigo is their other brand, same company. Um, is the fit for the getaway jeans similar to the Madrid? You know, the Madrid has a different fit in the behind. Um, I think it's a fuller fit in the butt than the getaway jeans. The getaway jeans, uh, if you have a full behind, backside, backside <laughs> um, you might fit better in the Madrid. I don't know. Or else you're going to maybe make the full butt adjustment on the getaways. Mm -hmm. But other than that, the, lay, the, the Madrid have more seams. There's a seam down the front, seam down the back. So you have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There are eight seams in the Madrid. So there are a lot of places to fit it, whereas this is a more traditional four seam. <laughs> I'm not sure I've got my counting correctly, but you get the idea. Um, would the Madrid or the getaways be good for Ponte? Oh, yes. Be great. As a matter of fact, um, this is not Ponte. I forgot to show you these. These are Aaron's. And this is not Ponte, but it has a Ponte-like flavor to it. It is a stretch woven, but to me it looks like a Ponte. 
And mm -hmm. so you can see, you know, you can make these without contrasting, top stitching, just sew them. So th these to me don't look like jeans. Are the mix it shirt and vest the same size, or do you make the vest a size larger? Uh, well, I don't know what size these are, but I would make the same size vest, and if I did anything, I would go up a size in the jacket, not the vest. But frankly, I think I would make the same size for both. What color is the golden twill? The golden twill is just a good old mustard gold. Um, it's, it's fairly bright, you know, it's got a lot of yellow in it. I think it's a touch brighter on the camera than in person, but it is bright, it is a bold color. Yeah. But it does seem like it's, it's a, a really, bright. I, I think, exciting color. I love these two mm -hmm. together. I love this one and this one together. I think all three of them are nice. Yeah combination. Yeah. You see how nice and drapey that is. Was the facing seam of the vest sewn when you sew the side seam or before the facing was sewn to the garment? Mm, I don't remember. Well, look. Um, I suspect it was sewn in one. That, was, that would be how I would tend to do it. I can't tell you about this one exactly, but yeah, it's a good idea. You can do it either way. It depends on where you think about it uh, <laughs> in the making of the garment, if you're kind of making it up as you go. But yeah, it's always a good idea to do it all in one if you can. Okay, I don't know. What? Somebody said, what is the dark blue fabric? Uh, um, this is... Uh, was that the cotton in spandex? I believe it was. Yeah, cotton in spandex. Mm -hmm. And the stretch is on the cross, so you're good there. It has a little bit of stretch vertically, but most of it's on the cross grain. Do you want to point out again the ones that have stretch on the cross grain versus the cross? Yeah. Be careful about um, that. Okay, the black is vertical stretch, the gray is vertical stretch, the navy, you can see there's a lot less stretch in the navy than there is this. But this is uh, crosswise, crosswise, vertical, horizontal, crosswise, 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 crosswise. Now, if you're, I know where you're going with this. You're going to wonder how many yards you should get. You can generally get um, more pieces out of cutting something crosswise than lengthwise. So whatever the pattern calls for, I would get that yardage, and you're going to have plenty, if not a little bit more, if you cut it the other direction. Sometimes that's what I do if I'm in trouble on quantity of fabric. If I'm a little short, quarter inch, uh, quarter yard short or something like that, I'll try a crosswise uh, layout. How much did you lengthen the back yoke of your getaway jeans? Um, I didn't lengthen them at all. Uh, but I, I, I mean, I've done this as much on people as an inch. You can do whatever. Um, you yeah. mentioned that you would normally do that. Yeah, so. I, th these don't have it for some reason, but uh, maybe a quarter of an inch. Maybe, maybe it would feel a little bit more up there if it were a quarter of an inch. Um, can you repeat the um, type of thread, top stitching thread that you use? Sure. It is dual duty, XP heavy. All right, and then can you repeat which way to lay out the pattern for the fabric with cross grain stretch and why? If it has cross grain stretch, then you're going to just lay it out like our normal layouts. If it has a vertical stretch, like this, then you're going to run your pattern pieces horizontal. Just flip them from the normal layout. Because you want the stretch to go mm -hmm. around you. Right. Just think about that. That's all you really have to worry about. 
figure out where the stretch is, and put your pattern pieces down that appropriate direction. I don't know if anybody picked it up or not. I think one person did. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, the special project that we had for So Confident in December, if you signed up before a certain date, you got a Eureka pocket top pattern and you could buy a special kit. And I made the pattern and I didn't pay any attention to that stretch. And I made the garment with the stretch going up and down and it worked out perfectly. Now, for pants, I don't necessarily suggest that, but on this Eureka top, I did it wrong. I'm good at doing things wrong. Um, why would you lengthen the yoke in the back of the getaway Oh, just if jeans? you need a little more height uh, to get the pants a deeper, higher stride to the back of the pants. And I would taper that back down uh, to normal uh, dimension at the side seams. So it's just a different shape. Uh, will this video be um, available to view later? This Facebook? Yes, mm -hmm. it will be. It'll be on our website and it'll be on YouTube. You can watch all of our Facebook lives that go back forever. Um, yeah. <laughs> you can see okay. the evolution of hairdos. Uh, <laughs> you can see the evolution of a lot of lighting, uh, technology. We've gotten a little bit better. Some of the older ones, I look at them and go, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. All awesome. right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, so, you conf so Confident members who are already members, uh, check out uh, all the information that's coming to you tomorrow. You're going to have some pattern work to do. Kits are available. And if you haven't signed up, you can sign up for So Confident for the year. You can sign up for the month. Uh, I see that we've already had a, a few people sign up for the February class alone, and that's great. So all the fabrics are on sale, plus the black, plus another navy, I think, and another black. We've got a couple blacks and a couple navies. Uh, the getaway pattern is both print and digital. And we also have a tutorial on how to make these jeans. Uh, it's so Confident Series 8, the fourth quarter. And there's a PDF on how to sew these getaway jeans with all the details that talk about lots of things that I talked about. There's also a, a tutorial, it's not on sale, but there's also a tutorial on the Picasso sweatshirt online workshop, the sweatshirt that I have on. So, all right, I'll see you next week and hopefully for the cover stitch uh, class tomorrow. <laughs>